to part 11 of our Construct 3 series and today we're going to be focusing on our enemy AI attack. Now we've done the player, as you guys can remember in our last series, we did the player attack. We did some animations with regards to that just to show you guys what that would look like with regards to the sword. We're going to obviously work with the collisions, but before we can work with the actual player collisions of this attack on the enemies, these two enemies that we've created, we need to ensure that we actually get these enemies prepped for that attack. So currently, if I go around to this enemy, he's just gonna hop towards us, as you guys can remember, but we need to put him in the attacking formation. So we're gonna go ahead and do that in this video. So what I've gone ahead, just to save some time, I've gone and added the animations with regards to the attack down, the attack right, and the attack left. I still need to add the up, but you guys understand the concept of having to how to sort of prep and set that accordingly. It just saves time in the video, not having to do that on screen. Right, I've also gone ahead and just uh, tied it up a little bit, put things in their selective sort of folders, created the event sheets for each one, so that we can slowly, as the game starts becoming bigger, we can navigate our way around carefully. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on our enemy family and we're going to need to add a new, you could say basically a new instant variable. And I want to call that instant variable, let's make that a, a number, but I want to call that distinct, uh, the distance between the player and the enemy. So I'm going to go distance and we go underscore and then go from underscore and I'm going to go player. Okay, because I'm going to need to work out how far this guy is from the player so that I can begin his animation. Now we do know that we are currently using the line of sight behavior. If we go over to our enemy, you're going to see we've got the line of sight behavior and we've got this whole method that tells it what to do. Now I'm going to go ahead and add another, you could say, condition here and then we're going to be able to walk, sort of work out exactly, you know, the distance between the player. So what we're going to do here is we can go ahead and basically copy this state to start off with. I'm going to go ahead and make that state attack. All right, let's go ahead and make that attack because that is a state that we have in terms of our value. So we know exactly what state this little enemy is in. So we're gonna have state and then obviously we're gonna begin, you guessed it, we're gonna begin the attack formation. So let's go ahead and create that as attack. Now it makes it quite simple because you can see this manages our animation. If I go ahead and click on the enemy that we have over here, we're gonna see that we've got this attack and underscore and this right, down and left. Now, if you can remember, we fill that with a variable, a global variable. We work up what the direction is of this enemy and we fill it that way. It's just a single line opposed to having multiple lines because we need to work out, is he facing down, left or right, all right? So now that we have the attack, so now we know that the anime, this will play once the state is set to attack. But what we need to do is we need to know when is the state actually set to attack. And in order to do that, we need to do a number of things. We need to firstly, while he's walking towards the enemy, we've got this distance here, you can see on frame, he's walking, he's, he's looping towards, as you guys can remember. I want us to add another condition. I wanna basically say, over here, I wanna say, set the perimeter, that perimeter we just created of the enemy. And I'm gonna go over to enemy bases, in fact, we might just work with this specific enemy over here. So let's go ahead and go into enemies, enemy base, and we're going to go set a value. We're going to go set this value, and we're going to go distance from the player that we've just created. And yeah, we're going to go distance, distance, it's a global variable, you can just tab it out, and we can begin the open and close brackets. And then we're going to go player, which is the obviously our player, so or the enemy first, doesn't matter which one you do. We can go ahead and say enemy, uh, enemy base, which is the first one, dot x, as you guys will know where we're going, comma, enemy base, and we're going to go dot y, and we're going to bracket that with regards to the, um, the player, and we're going to select our player base. We could just say player or player base, doesn't really matter. Player base dot, because it is pinned, as you guys can remember, to each other, player base dot x, and then we're going to pin that as well to player can imagine player dot one fantastic so then we've got the entire condition so theoretically if I go ahead and now do a, a debug preview and I select this player let's just make this a little wider for you guys I'll select this little guy which is enemy base one you're gonna see this uh, this variable that we created called distance from the player so here is our player I'm gonna go ahead and just rerun that just to give you an idea Right, so there's our player, and we've got the enemy base, enemy base one, and there is still zero, basically, from the distance. So once he starts to walk, this value should start filling. 
So you're gonna see now there he starts walking. As you can see, it's getting smaller and smaller. As he gets closer, it's gonna get shorter and then he hits me. So it's under 50 is basically the distance. So what we wanna do now is we basically wanna create a new condition to say, look, if this distance, because now as you can imagine, this distance is now filled and we know now exactly how far um, the player is from us. We wanna say, and here we can just create a new condition right over here, uh, below this condition. Let's just go and add. Uh, below should have another thing here, add a, another condition. Uh, so yeah, we go insert below. And I'm gonna go, in this case, I'm gonna go enemy, which is the enemy base. I'm gonna go enemy base. And then I'm going to set the um, the variable with regards to check the distance between. I'm gonna go enemy base, compare variable. Uh, where is this compare? There we go, compare instant variable. And then we're gonna go is less or equal. Now the reason why we say less or equal is because it needs to be within that 50 range. So I'm gonna say it's about 50 pixels, knowing that the artwork of this animation is around about 50. We could make this greater, we can have to tweak this as we go. So I'm gonna go, if the enemy, sorry, that's damage, that should not be damage, that should be distance from the player, sorry. If the distance from the enemy distance from the player is less or, uh, less or equal to, I think that's less or equal, yeah, less or equal to 50, go ahead and start the, you could say, attacks or set the state at least to um, to attack. So that we're gonna just go and do here, we're gonna go, or we can just copy it right over there to save some time. Go ahead, paste it there and set the state to attack. Okay. Now what's going to happen, theoretically, is that when the state is changed to attack and I've got line of sight, he's gonna always check that line of sight, obviously, and then he is going to then change his formation, uh, his animation based on the attack state. Now he's gonna only play it once because we don't have this currently set at loop, as you'll see here. We don't have it set to loop on the animation of, let's say, the attack left. You'll see it's not set to loop or the right or the down. So it's only gonna play once and it's gonna do nothing. And then we need to put a condition that says, obviously, when the animation's finished, go back to idle and wash, rinse, repeat that, that you can say motion. Right, so let's go ahead and play that quickly. And let's take a look and see. So we've got our character there, he's in idle mode. And if we make the corner, he should hop towards us. Oh, no. So basically he started his animation without hopping towards us. Now, the reason for that, if I'm not mistaken, is we're gonna need another condition here. What it's checking is to see that it's less or equal to 50. However, at default, you'll notice that we are currently set to zero. So it is less than 50. So it's going to start that attack prior to him actually moving. That's where the problem is. So we can by default, let's say leave that to 100 because we know that the player needs to hop towards us. And then let's go ahead and add another condition. And this condition, actually, I'm just gonna copy this one. It's basically to say that he has to be in a state of walking. Only when he's walking, then he gets to this distance, go ahead and set the attack. Now that should solve our problem. So let's go and have a look now. Our little player is walking and he needs to hop to us, this little guy. So yeah, there he goes, he's gonna hop. And when he gets close to me, you see, he doesn't change, but when he gets close, he should stop and do his little animation. Right, so there it is. Okay, so it does still need a little bit of work, you could say, um, to get this to work correctly. Um, obviously, the animation was slightly delayed, and there's a number of reasons for this, because it waited for the walking animation to first complete and then begin the state of attack. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to basically set the attack, as you saw, it's time to not it, it'll loop through only because it's currently set to attack and it's running this condition every time. Idle, uh, if state is attack, run this because these conditions are in fact true and then go ahead and set the attack. Now what I want us to do is I want us to do something similar to what we did with regards to the um, to the the walking motion if, if, if that makes any sense. So we're going to go ahead and create an on animation finished like this one here. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this entire thing. I'm going to say on animation finish go back to to walk essentially go back to the walking uh, motion because it's always going to be greater than 50. So let's go ahead and change this to say um, on animation attack, attack finished, whatever enemy direction it is. Okay, set the idle um, to, let's say to walk, let's set this to walk in fact. I think at that state is walk or walking, walking, let's set that to walking. And the state timer, we can leave to zeros for now as well. It doesn't make any difference. That's fine. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So effectively, if I run away from him, he's going to go back to hopping. Okay, so there he comes. 
He jumps. He's in the range now. He's going to attack. I'm going to run away. On animation finished. And he's not finishing. Why? Because the state on animation attack is finished has gone back to walking. The walking is in fact true. And the distance is in fact less because he's not walking so it's not updating this value so you guys can see how complex this actually is so this value of the distance between player and that needs to be moved in fact that needs to be checked every time the player is set to walking so let's go ahead and see if that fixes it so now we're walking and uh, he's going to hop towards us fantastic he's then going to go in his action i'm going to run away and he's going to hop Fantastic. So now we know that that's true because he's always walking. He should get to me. He's going to attack. That's fantastic. He's going to attack. And he's going to attack. Now you'll notice that the the animation isn't 100% perfect. And I'm going to show you walking away. And he should come in and he should attack. Now you see that it's skewed there. Look at that there. That's a perfect example. You see that. How we fix that is really quite simple. Is we go ahead over onto the enemy. And we'll notice we've got these origin points uh, set you. If I go down to the attack down, you'll notice that this one is sitting there, which is wrong, and the others are centered. So if I go ahead and center that, that then solves that problem. Now we shouldn't see that attack if I go ahead and fix it, run it again, just to show you how we set the origin point so we can make sure that the, the animations are smooth. And he comes down, you'll see now that the little guy isn't sitting here, it's all now a lot more smoother. Run away, he's going to keep coming towards me. And then bang fantastic right guys so that is our tutorial for today we're going to obviously be working on uh, different things with regards to this animation like the kickback you'll notice is not working because there's states where on collision it's looking it needs to know that he attacks so we're going to do that in our next and up and coming tutorial but this was purely just to show you how we can get the the enemy uh, attack animations to work and then we're going to be working with the collision events in our next tutorial and we're going to be destroying both player as well as enemy um, in the next tutorial so stay tuned for that guys as always if you're new here hit the subscribe and the little thumbs up there uh, it's always appreciated and we'll catch you guys in the next one